Now let's take a look at seasonal variations. So we looked at uh, uh, the variations with the trend line before. Now we are taking seasonality into consideration. Sometimes recurring variations uh, make a seasonal adjustment in the trend line forecast necessary. Demand for coal and fuel oil, for example, usually peaks during cold winter months. Demand for golf clubs or suntan lotion may be highest in summer. Analyzing data in monthly or quarterly terms usually makes it easy to spot seasonal patterns. A seasonal index is often used in multiplicative time series forecasting models to make an adjustment in the forecast when a seasonal component exists. A seasonal index indicates how a particular season, such as month or quarter, compares with an average season. An index of 1 for a season would indicate that the season is average. If the index is higher than 1, the values of the time series in the season tend to be higher than average. If the index is lower than 1, the value of the time series in that season tend to be lower than average. When no trend is present, the index can be found by dividing the average value for a particular season by the average of all the data. Thus, an index of 1 means the season is average. For example, if the average sales in January were 120 and the average sales in all months were 200, uh, the seasonal index for January would be 120 divided by uh, 200, which is 0.6. So January is below average. The next example uh, here illustrates how to compute seasonal indices from his historical data and to use this in forecasting future values. So if you look at here, uh, we have a December year one was the demand was 80 and year two, uh, again, it was 80. Therefore, uh, the average uh, uh, year demand is uh, 80 and monthly demand is uh, 94 and uh, uh, that can be derived from 100 uh, uh, the total is 1128 divided by 12 months gives you 94 so that's a monthly demand the average demand is right here and average seasonal index is just uh, uh, 80 divided by 94 gives you 0 0.58 0.851, meaning 85% of the average demand was achieved in December, right? In the same way, you can go to January. January, you had actual average of two years, 80 and 100 gives you 90, and that there was your two-year average demand. And monthly demand, the, the uh, demand from the historical data is 94. So 90 over 94 gives you 0.957, meaning that uh, in January, your average sale was below uh, the average uh, yearly sales. And let's go to, say, June. And uh, June in two year, uh, say, you know, this year and, and last year, 115 and 131. And you combine them and average them, then you have 123. And uh, the monthly average data uh, throughout the year was 94. So you're going to di uh, divide uh, 115 by 94, and it gives you 1.223. So you see that uh, uh, your sales was higher than uh, average sales. And uh, that's your seasonal index. Your average seasonal index is given right here. So seasonal index is average two-year demand divided by the average monthly demand, and that gives you the seasonal index. And that's how you can calculate that. And that explains this, how, how we calculate this average seasonal index. So if you do that, uh, your data can be decisionalized, and, and decisionalized data is created by dividing each observation by the appropriate seasonal index, and that I will show you soon. So seasonal indices now with trend. How do you do that? Uh, when both trend 
and seasonal components were present, we have to follow these steps. And there are uh, uh, five, four steps to follow to calculate seasonal indices with a trend. And at the time, you are going to be using the centered moving average, CMA, centered moving average approach. Um, and that will help you to compute that. So how do we do that? So first of all, let's take a look at this data, uh, quarter one to four and year one to three and average a for quarter one, it was 108, 116, 123, and you can see the average was increasing 115 at quarter one. At quarter two, for three-year data, 133 at quarter two, quarter three, 159, and quarter four, 152. So you see quarter one was the lowest, and quarter three was the highest, and the pattern is shown here, right, uh, consistently. And, uh, uh, and we can see year one, 131, year two, 140, and year three, 149. So you, we see that uh, it's an increasing trend we see. And also we see seasonality between a quarter one and two and three and four. So uh, we want to include uh, not only seasonal indices, but also we need to take a look at this uh, trend and include that in our uh, forecasting analysis. At the time, we are going to be using CMA and uh, calculate that, and that will help us to find the trend as well. So how do we do that? So CMA is uh, calculated by uh, this formula. So we, we use uh, this, uh, um, uh, how many, uh, so five, uh, four, for, uh, we have four quarters, so we want to include all of them. And uh, when we are including them, we are going to center them around. So 132 can be uh, um, include 125, 150, 141. These three uh, uh, quarterly data was included. And also we want to include 50% of 108 and 50% of 116. In the way, we can uh, reflect the... the the uh, past data and the future data equally. So 0 0.5 times 108 and 0.5 times 116, then that will produce 132. In the same way, 134, uh, you are going to include these three very uh, um, sales data and uh, 0 0.5 times 125 and uh, 0 0.5 times 134, that will uh, produce 134.125. In that way, you are going to center them around, and that's uh, centered moving average. And then you can now uh, calculate seasonal ratio. So seasonal ratio is calculated as sales in quarter three in this one, which is uh, uh, um, uh, 150, and divided by uh, the centered moving average, 132. So 150 divided by 132 gives you 100, I'm sorry, 1.136. So meaning that the seasonal ratio in this case is 1.136, is higher than one. Therefore, at quarter three, we see that there was a, a increase in sales than average that we can uh, say. Um, similarly, we can calculate 1.1. 051 for quarter four of year one uh, by uh, dividing 141 by 134, that gives you 1.051. And, and so forth, you can calculate all of this uh, seasonal ratio using this. When C, uh, CMA is not existent, then you cannot calculate uh, seasonal ratio that you have to remember. So if you follow these steps, compute the CMA first, right, as I did. Uh, uh, if it is a quarterly data, you are including five of them because uh, uh, we need to include 50% of the previous and then 50% of future data together. Uh, if it was, say, 12-month data, then how many you are going to have? You are going to have 13 data set on your numerator. Uh, so, so that's uh, what. So then uh, now we need to find uh, a quarterly index because we have a quarter data, quarterly data and uh, uh, seasonal indices with trend helps us to find the quarterly index and uh, it's quite straightforward for us to find that. So 
for example, we have quarter one and quarter one here. So we don't have uh, quarter one data for year one, but uh, we do have quarter one data for year two and three. If you go to seasonal ratio, that's 0.851 right here, corresponding uh, seasonal ratio that we have just calculated from the previous slide is right here. And then at uh, year three, we have 0.848, that's right here, right? So, so you um, add them together and divide it by two. So you find the average of these seasonal ratios for uh, quarter one. Then uh, you have quarterly index QI1, which is 0.85. That's your quarterly index for quarter one. And similarly, quarter two, we have uh, um, 0.965 and then 0.960. Uh, add them together, divided by two, you have 0.96. Quarter three, we have the uh, quarter three data right here, 1.136 and then uh, 1.127. So you add them up and divide it by two, 1.13. And qu similarly, quarter four, 1.06. So that's how you find quarterly index uh, with the trend is included right here.